Yeah, hey everyone, this is Dwayne with Goodworks Auto and Dwayne's Diagnostics. And uh, I got this 1992 uh, Dodge Dakota truck to uh, do some work on. And uh, I figured I'd make a video about this. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a flashback to uh, OBD1 days. <coughs> Excuse me, but uh, I figured I'd show you... Uh, what it was like uh, to use a scan tool back in the OBD1 days. Uh, and I'm using an old snap-on scan tool. Uh, you know, there was still uh, factory scan tools and other different types of code readers and stuff back then, but uh, I got an old snap-on one. And uh, for anyone uh, not not familiar with OBD1, this was, uh, this was kind of the process... Uh, these are the type of things you had to have to uh, hook up at least this particular scan tool. There's all kinds of adapters for uh, different makes and models. Like uh, this is a Ford that's, uh, I think this whole bag right here is Ford stuff. And uh, this is like, uh, this is a bunch of Asian, Asian adapters. These are, are the adapters you need to like tap into the whatever diagnostic port the vehicle had. That's Toyota 2, this is Toyota 1, uh, Nissan 1, Honda 1. There might be like, you know, multiple different connectors for uh, each manufacturer. And like, here's another bag of them. There's some GM, GM, uh, Ford probably all more than domestic adapters in there and then they got these keys that you have to uh on certain vehicles you got to plug these keys into this thing right here this is the obd2 adapter that uh hooks up to the scan tool then they got all these different jumper wires depending on what vehicle you're working on you you need some of those and then there's uh all kinds of different manuals i got board this is the asian one uh these things these things all stuck together because they've been sitting in this case for so long obd2 transmission troubleshooter gm prom chip book and i'll show you the scan tool uh and how it's hooked up this is the scan tool what they call the brick or the old red brick or whatever but that's the cable that hooks up. And then uh, this is the actual diagnostic port for this vehicle way down here in this right corner, which uh, also takes, uh, it's gotta be hooked up to battery power. So I got this, uh, this wire here running a, all the way along here over to the battery which uh i gotta hook that up but i gotta turn the key on to show you how this thing works it does have a check engine light it did there for a second i don't know if you can see that Check engine right down here. And I did, I did just, uh, I did just have, I did just have this scan tool, uh, turned on and was looking at, uh, checked it for codes and there's actually no codes in it. Uh, I'll show you what you got to go through here to, uh, to get this thing to communicate. Well, actually, I guess I won't show you that because it's already got this truck pulled up as a 92 Dodge, two-wheel drive, automatic transmission, three points. 
9 liter multi port injection AC. It, yes. Connect Chrysler 1 adapter to connector located on right side of firewall. Press yes or no to continue. So that's the adapter I have hooked up right there. Codes and data menu, functional test, custom setup, troubleshooter. Go to codes just to show you there's no codes in it. No codes for present. <clears throat> This uh, secondary indicators, I think that's like pending codes, I'm not sure. So, uh, can't really get this in a good position it looks like to get rid of that glare but this thing uh actually gives quite a bit of uh, data PIDs. I was actually surprised uh, how much data it gives you because some of these OBD-1 vehicles uh, won't give you any data at all. That They'll just, uh, you can only pull codes with them. So I was actually kind of surprised this thing has, uh, gives you all kinds of data PIDs. Map sensor, coolant, voltage, coolant, degrees. Air, volt, air temp, voltage, fuel percent. Uh, I'm not sure if that's fuel trim. I think that might be what that is. Battery volts, battery temp, desired idle, RPM, throttle position, timing advance, spark advance. So, uh, yeah, I was actually actually surprised this thing gives you that much information on this old of a vehicle. And uh, there's a lot of other, other things this thing will do and a lot of other information it'll give you. Uh, I honestly haven't used this thing. I used it once about six months ago uh, and probably hadn't used it before that for like maybe two or three years but it it does uh it'll do a uh, different type of bi-directional test fuel pressure test ATM minimum minimum airflow module info read ignition battery positive at DLC go back it's got uh, this troubleshooter built into it code tips symptom tips testing procedures so uh yeah actually surprised how much uh, this thing will do on this this old of a vehicle um, this scan tool is actually like top of the line back in its day. Uh, like, I don't know, like maybe 25 or 30 years ago, uh, 
you know back in the days of obd1 and uh it was actually a pretty good scan tool uh when obd2 came out also but uh anyway i just figured i'd do a little video on that uh kind of a flashback to uh the days of uh obd1 uh and uh like kind of how much different it was um you know not just the standard uh same port on every vehicle and uh you know some uh, a lot of vehicles you know you couldn't even get live data or anything like this you could only pull pull codes on so i'm actually surprised at how much uh information uh this vehicle will give me but uh i actually haven't started doing any any work on this thing i wanted to hook this scan tool up and uh see if it would actually communicate with the module with the computer the computer is actually right over here that's the computer for it so i just wanted to see if it would communicate and what kind of information it would give me and if it had any codes in it so but i haven't actually started doing anything to this thing but figured i'd make this little video on on this and uh kind of a flashback to the days of obd1 but uh yeah anyway that's probably it for this one